Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to repair these XL6009 modules. What sometimes happens is, is that if you pass a certain amount of current through it, too much current, um, a certain component overheats, and the component that overheats is the diode. And sometimes it can damage the actual XL6009 chip, but most of the time it doesn't, it just destroys the diode. So I'm going to show you how to test for this, well first of all how to identify if it's broken, then how to identify if the problem is what I think it is, and then lastly, how to repair it. So, to start with, if I give this, say, 6 volts, 6 volts there, you can see it's 6 point something on here, so I'll just reduce this to 6 volts, there you go, 6 volts, and what you'll find is the output is the same as the input. Now this could be getting really hot now, so I don't do this for too long, and you'll notice that um, you can go down, but not up. So you can't you can't increase the voltage. So that's a problem. You can only get it to match the input voltage. Okay, first of all, if you get this problem, shut the power off straight away because if you keep the power running, this module will get really hot. So let's just disconnect everything now. Um, it's not particularly hot actually. Move this out of the way. Okay, so this is what you'll need to do to test it. Get your um, multimeter, and then hopefully you'll have a diode test, which is this one here on mine. Then, uh, let me just zoom out a little bit more. Then, if you get the, uh, if you see the diode here, this little diode, we're going to test it. So we'll test one side first. So if you just push your probes onto one side and make sure it contacts and on the other side you can see here that there's no resistance zero zero one okay so it means there's no resistance there so now switch them around and try the other side and there's no resistance there so that diode is definitely broken so that diode's broken so um, what should happen is that one side will block, in other words, infinite resistance, and the other side will be low resistance. Usually I've found about 200 ohms or something like that, sometimes less. So that diode is, is broken. So that could be damaging the chip. Um, so this chip could be damaged, or it might not be damaged. Um, but if we replace this diode, um, we might be able to repair this. So... So, you could actually have a look at the data sheet of the module itself, and it will tell you a recommended diode. And I can't remember what that diode is, but it's certainly not the diode that's on there. Anyway, what I'm going to do is, I am going to replace it with the diode that's on there, but I may replace it with two diodes. So, that should mean that I can double the amount of current. So, okay, I'm going to repair this now. Right, so I'm going to remove this diode. while well, the camera is in the way, anyway. There's one side up. And if I can just get hold of this. And there's the other side off. So I've got the diode out. And then I need to get my replacement diodes ready. Right, I'll just clean this up a little bit. Just put some flux on there just to clean it up. And I'll try some desoldering work as well, but I don't think this soldering iron's gonna be hot enough. And I've got the two diodes here. Okay, so the line 
you can see, I don't, well actually I don't know if you can see, let's zoom in a bit. Yeah, you can see the lines on the left side, and on the little logo you can see the lines on the left side, so I need to solder them in that way. It's going to be difficult with the camera again, but anyway. Some solder ready. And tweezers ready. So I'll just tap a little bit underneath. And let's see what I can do. Okay, I've got one in there. Just do the other side. Okay, so I've got one diode in place, and then really, if I put another diode in place, it will make it better. That's better. And now this side. Okay, a bit more solder. Okay, and it's done. So I'll just zoom in and show you. And now you can see they've got two diodes on top of each other. It's not amazing for heat dissipation, but um, just to show you, it should be okay. Alright, now I'll test it out and show you. Okay, so I'll just connect my voltmeter again. You can see the two diodes there. No. Alright, just connect my voltmeter. Let's start. So I'll give it, I don't know, 8 volts or 9 volts. There you go, 9 volts. And you can see already that it says 24.6, so I'll try and increase that now. And it should go up to about 47, I think. The data sheet actually claims 60 volts, but there you go. 47.7. So you can see that um, earlier it was broken, now it works. Now, not only does it work, Hopefully this will last longer now as well and not do that again or maybe it would do that again but it will certainly be able to um, deal with more amperage. So because we've got two diodes now instead of one they won't get absolutely red hot as they, um, as they did previously because now the load will be shared between the two. Um, so although in my in my uh, fix here you can see that I've stacked them stacking them is not really a great idea because if the um, let me just disconnect this because if the module is that way then the one underneath is going to dissipate heat into the one above so the one below is going to get hotter than the one above but anyway this way maybe not as bad but anyway just to show you the fix so um, if you get one of these modules and they don't work anymore and they do the uh, problem that I described earlier then you could do this fix change the one component and you should be able to bring it back to life so if you do if you do it and replace it with two diodes uh, these are SS34 diodes um, you should be able to fix it and um, increase the amperage because really the diode here is the bottleneck of this whole system at least 
according to my tests it is anyway. So anyway, hopefully this uh, video has helped you and thanks for watching. Bye!